I'll just run through some titles here. Caddy, which you've mentioned. Mm. Um, Helen Morse's first big film, really. Yeah. Uh, as, as a lead. Mad Dog Morgan. Yes. <laughs> um, Screened recently on Fox. Mad Dog Morgan. Mad Dog Morgan. Devil's Playground, which Great again is Fred Skepsis' big breakthrough film. That was the first picture I did for Fred. He had done a thing, um, I think it was called Libido, where there were three, I think three directors did about half hour each or something in, as a drama three different dramas. But this, I, I still think that's a fantastic picture, um, Devil's Playground. Because as I said, I like pictures where I believe the people straight up, I believe the action, I don't, they haven't got to you know, fly through plate glass windows to, to impress me. Um, and I thought it was a beautiful picture. So and, was Fred there for the mix? Oh yeah, that? every minute. How Absolutely. was it like working with someone like him? Great, he was a good guy. He's, he's an extreme guy. I've, I've mixed several pictures for Fred, several. I mixed that. He was very angry on the next picture, which was Jimmy Blacksmith. Mm. I said, I can't mix Chant this. Jimmy Blacksmith. Yeah. Chant, yeah. I, he said, I, I said, I can't. I said, well, I, I said I'm, I'm taking my rugby team. I was coaching Parramatta Rugby to Europe. We're going to England. He said, well, you'll have to just go a different time. I said, man, I can't. It's a tour. It's cost us $40,000 to get organised. So I couldn't mix it. And this is absolutely true. The English production manager, whose name I've forgotten, rang me and said, could you mix it while you're in England? <laughs> <laughs> I said, mate, you've been to rugby too. <laughs> yeah. So I mixed that, I missed that, sorry, missed that. And then I picked up again with Fred on um, Evil Angels, which the Yanks called A Cry, Cry in the, in the dark. dark. Yeah. Um, and I mixed um, later for him when he'd become very well known overseas. Um, and this happened with a few of the directors, they, got, they were big enough then to mix that, to shoot overseas, had enough clout to bring their films back. I mixed several features for Fred, which were shot overseas. Um, one was Mr. Baseball, good film, um, had that um, uh, big guy in it. Um, oh, I can't think was of that Kevin Costner? I can't remember who. I don't know. No, the film no, well. it wasn't. Uh, had a mistake. Reynolds, I think that's right. Is that right? Actor. Oh, Magnum. P.I. was, or Burt Reynolds was it? Was it Mr. I, think it was, I think it was Burt Reynolds in, in this picture, I think. If we don't work it out, you'll see it on the lower third right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Mr. Baseball, uh, The Russia House with Connery, Sean Connery and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. And then I, I mixed at Roger Savage's studio in Melbourne for Fred also, um, a, a little cute little film, romantic film called IQ. Had Meg Ryan in it and Walter Matthau. Well, Lovely how good film. was Walter Matthau? Yeah. He was he was he was Albert Einstein in it. Yeah, I love Walter Matthau. Um, and I also mixed Six Degrees of Separation for Fred, which was the um, um, Will Smith. Will Smith, yeah. correct. Will Smith, that's right. Um, so I mix I mixed a lot of movies for Fred over a long time, and I got on great with him. He's he's he can be quite extreme, you know. Like, so even doing U.S. films, the mix is happening back here in Australia. Yes, agreed. Yep, yep. So what, was there any problems with the, um, like Six Degrees, which was a Hollywood studio funding it, whoever mm. it was, um, they didn't have a problem with it being out here? No Would they idea. prefer to have it done some, by someone in America? No idea. The only people out here from America were the, were the two music guys. Um, the music, um, Jerry Goldsmith, the musical director, yeah. and his music editor, a fellow called, strangely enough, Ken Hall, famous film name, but... Ken Hall, a different Ken Hall. Yeah, yeah, different Ken Hall. Lovely bloke too. Um, so Jerry Goldsmith did the music in the US and bring it out here for the. No, music. he did it here. He did oh, it here. Oh, okay. he, yeah, no, they recorded it in Melbourne. Um, they recorded the Russia House music here, um, and they recorded. I think all of Jerry's stuff that he did out here, he actually shot out here. He recorded they, it. Out they here. Reco oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Don's party. So again, this is uh, uh, this is Bruce Beresford. It was, yeah. And he did a lot of these these plays. The Don's Party, the club. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't do the club. No, I missed the club. No, well, I'm, he did, but you didn't. I'm sorry, so, yes. I'm sorry. I mixed these... I was going to mix... I was supposed to mix the first um, um, uh, Barry Crocker thing. Um, Basil McKenzie. Basil McKenzie. But we Along with Alvin Purple, that was one of the... Yeah, yeah <laughs> they, they were the breakthrough ones. But, yeah. but we weren't ready. So that was mixed at our trance where I where I'd left. And a mate of mine mixed that Phil Judd, mixed that up at our transa. Phil Judd's still working to this yeah, day. Sure yeah, sure he is, sure he is. Um, and now he is a, he is a fanatic. I, I mean, mm. I was never a fanatic, but he's a fanatic. I've got sound that film on me. Um, 
I'm not knocking him. He's, he's just he's a fanatic. Well, it, mm. it seems like you and Phil Judd have mixed almost every Australian film. Well, we did for a long time until Roger Savage got involved, and then they, they then they did. Roger's done a lot of movies because um, there was no Melbourne facility at first, which is the reason I did the early ones for for Bruce, um, um, for um, Timmy Burstall, and for Fred. I did the I did that thing called um, Good Picture Two about the. The, the body, um, um, oh, you know, the... Um, the guy in the hospital bed, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. Patrick, sorry, Patrick. Patrick. Yes. That was Melbourne. Yeah, so this is 1978 we're getting up to, yeah. yeah. I did a film from Melbourne, A Shot in the Dark was from Melbourne. Um, no, no, a bigger part, um, Double Deal, Double Deal it was called, I know it was a cowboy type picture. That was Melbourne. I did another Melbourne film that had a, a rock, op, uh, Aussie, Aussie opera, rock opera thing, it was... Good fun too. Anyway, the one based on the Wiz? The Wizard yes, of Oz, correct. Which correct. Was, I forget what it was called, but yes, it was a yes, rock version of that. It was, correct. <laughs> um, so I did all the early Melbourne films because there was no Melbourne facility. But um, uh, Bruce, I guess I did Bruce's pictures. The first one I mixed was um, uh, The Getting of Wisdom. Yes, mm. um, which is 1978. Yes. Uh, and then I mixed the Money Movers. And the Money Movers in that same year. And yeah. there was Patrick, an odd angry shot. Um, I, so, I, what, I, so Bruce Berry, what was he like to work with? Odd angry shot wasn't Bruce's, but... No, no. Uh, sure. Yeah. But um, good, very good. Um, very dry sense of humour. I got on great with him. He was a King School boy. Um, I say Parramatta boy. So I, used to, I went to Parramatta High. We used to bag them because they used to wear the <laughs> funny uniforms, you know. So <laughs> that, was, that was a good place to start with him. But no, no, good. And, and uh, I also mixed for him um, a film much later, um, which I really liked, uh, called The Fringe Dwellers. Yes, which was... Um, it was after I'd finished it at, at um, United. It must have been about 1987 or something, I think, don't you? See, I've, I've got five, six pages of oh, credit <laughs> I'm trying to catch up matter, with doesn't you. Matter. <laughs> um, yes. But no, no, I enjoyed working with Bruce, very much so. He's a good guy. Um, he, he, took a, he took some films away from me, or he took one from me, which I never forgave him for. He, he, if he sees this, he'll find out. I never t- tell him, but I really did want to mix Breaker Morant. So why did, why did you not mix that for him? Well, I got the story later that I was making too many rugby phone calls. You know, that may, that may have been a rumour, it may have been correct. But, because um, he had no problem with what I, was, what I did for him, because I'd done, I'd done um, The Getting of Wisdom, Money Movers. I certainly mixed Don's Party for him. I think Don's Party might have been before Breaker Marine. Yeah, that's before. That's like 76. Okay. So that was, a, that yeah. was the one I might, must have made too many movies, too many, too <laughs> too many, many. things on. Too many, too many phone calls about the, about the, about the footy. Anyway, um, no, no, he was, he was a great guy to work with. And I still know him. He's, uh, we're good mates. I don't see him very often. But uh, I enjoyed him. It, it was difficult not to enjoy them all because, as I say, it was a very exciting period. And some of them actually came out of the film school, like Phil Noyce, for instance. Julian yes. Ar- Julian well, Armstrong. this is the beginning of the film school era. You sure. Know, we, sure. Um, in the 70s. And yeah. in America, sure. you've got the Spielbergs and the Lucases. And here we get these guys coming out of um, sure. having done documentaries and things at, at Film Australia. Yeah. In film schools. And Phil Noyce, okay. I we, mixed his first big picture. That was um, to do with the takeover of the, of the um, news release. News front. Film. Yeah. Which isn't listed here. So you did Newsfront as well. I did. Yeah. Mm. What was it like working with Phil Norris? Good, terrific, funny, fun guy. He, he, he well, he's a big guy, as you know, he's six mm. foot six or something. I've been in a couple of his films. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, and he he played like Heatwave, which we talked about. Yeah. He played some Colts rugby with Gordon uh, as a young bloke in the second row, and he he didn't like it much. And so we had. I used to bag him about that. How yeah, he must have been pretty weak. Not about like, continue on with a rugby career rather than become a filmmaker. So they were all very down-to-earth people, all of them I found, you know. Um, I mixed subsequent films for, for Noisy. It was um, uh, a very good picture, I thought. It was a, the, the Juanita Nelson thing, Nelson thing was... Um, um, Don't know that. Uh, was that yes, called? you do. Heatwave. That, that was Heatwave. Yeah, oh, yes. That was, okay. that was the girl who disappeared, the journalist girl who disappeared yes. at the cross. And I mixed for him another film um, much later called... Um, Shadows of the Peacock, which mm-hmm. he shot up in the, up, um, Indonesia somewhere, but came back here and mixed it. So I did a few for him. And um, 
Nah, good guy, good guy. And Ghanaian, films like Thirst and Harlequin and Patrick we've talked about. Well, they, were, they were the real low budget ones for yeah. us. So it, it might seem strange now, but all those films I've mentioned, all those good films, took two weeks to mix, including fix-ups. Screenings, fix-ups, all done, two weeks. Now, it might have been a long two weeks. They might have been 12-hour days sometimes, but they were You'd mix the weeks. whole feature film in two weeks flat. Except for Ghanaian, they were one week. <laughs> That's true, Tony Ghanaian. Tony one, Ghanaian would You've got Ghanaian. a week to mix them. I mixed a film called Snapshot for him, one called Thirst. was a, 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 a vampire, vampire film. Vampire thing, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Snapshot was about... Um, the Mr. Whippy Man was the, was the baddie. He was the, he was the robber or he was the killer or something. And he used to take, I think he took photographs of, from out of his whippy van, I'm, I forget now, but anyway. We got a week to mix them, one week. Can you imagine that? Mm. So there'd be 20 tracks of reel, put them on, bang, have a quick look at, look at the reel straight through, decide what to pre-mix, whack them on, bang. You needed to, to essentially do two reels a day. Mm. 